Welcome to our service of evening prayer on this, the third Sunday in the season of Easter. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise for ever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Pray together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. You led your people to freedom by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. May we who walk in the light of your presence acclaim your Christ, rising victorious as he banishes all darkness from our hearts and minds. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. We say together the Easter anthems. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ once raised from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all, in living he lives to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin, and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The day is almost over, and the evening has come. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your Spirit come down upon us 
to set us free to speak and sing your praise for ever and ever. Amen. We praise God as we say our psalm, Psalm 87. His foundation is on the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, Zion, city of our God. I record Egypt and Babylon as those who know me. Behold, Philistia, Tyre and Ethiopia, in Zion where they were born. And of Zion it shall be said, each one was born in her, and the Most High himself has established her. The Lord will record as he writes up the peoples. This one also was born there. And as they dance they shall sing. All my fresh springs are in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 1 through to verse 13. The word of the Lord Almighty came to me. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I am very jealous for Zion. I am burning with jealousy for her. This is what the Lord says. I will return to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the faithful city and the mountain of the Lord Almighty will be called the holy mountain. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Once again, men and women of ripe old age will sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each of them with cane in hand because of their age. The city streets will be filled with boys and girls playing there. This is what the Lord Almighty says. It may seem marvellous to the remnant of this people at that time, but it will seem marvellous to me, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will save my people from the countries of the east and the west. I will bring them back to live in Jerusalem. They will be my people, and I will be faithful and righteous to them as their God. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Now hear these words. Let your hands be strong so that the temple may be built. This is also what the prophets said, who were present when the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord Almighty. Before that time, there were no wages for people of, or hire for animals. No one could go about their business safely because of their enemies, since I had turned everyone against their neighbour. But now I will not deal with the remnant of this people as I did in the past declares the Lord Almighty. The seed will grow well, the vine will yield its fruit, the ground will produce its crops, and the heavens will drop their dew. I will give all these things as an inheritance to the remnant of this people, just as you, Judah and Israel, have been a curse among the nations. So I will save you, and you will be a blessing do not be afraid, but let your hands be strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We say together the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, 
from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading this evening is from the book of Revelation, from chapter 21, reading from verse 22. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendour into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honour of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign for ever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We say together the Nunc Dimittis. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. So begins chapter 21 of the book of Revelation, setting the scene for the verses we have read tonight. Both our readings this evening concern Jerusalem. In the first reading from the prophet Zechariah, we see the historical city of Jerusalem, the city which was seen as God's city, where he dwelt in the temple. In our second reading, we move in time to the Jerusalem of heaven, 
a place which is seen as a place of hope and healing, a place where God is ever present and all will be well. It is a vision of hope, written firstly for people living in a time of persecution. I have to say that I like visiting cities and have been privileged over the years to visit many cities here in the UK and abroad. Each one has its own story to tell, a story of the past, the present and the future. As we read of Jerusalem in Revelation, there are echoes to the earthly Jerusalem and human history. For the people of Israel, worship was important. When they escaped from Egypt and journeyed in the wilderness, they made a tent-like place of worship called the Tabernacle. Once they had established themselves in the Promised Land, Solomon built a temple in Jerusalem to take the place of the Tabernacle. Over the years, there was destruction and rebuilding until the final destruction of the temple in AD 70. In Revelation we see the vision John was given, which was not of the old Jerusalem, but the new Jerusalem, the ideal, the perfected Jerusalem. Here the temple is not needed. God's presence is not limited or concentrated in one place. God himself will be there, and we will worship continually in spirit and truth. As indeed for us there are echoes of the future now, as we can't worship in our buildings. The presence of God will be in glory and light. In the book of Isaiah, in his prophecies, Isaiah says, The sun shall be no more your light by day, Neither for brightness shall the moon give light to you, but Yahweh will be to you an everlasting light, and your God your glory. In our reading tonight in verses 24 and 25, there are echoes from Isaiah. This time from Isaiah 60 in verses 10 and 11, where he says, Foreigners shall bind up your walls, and their king shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favour have I had mercy on you. Your gates also shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night, that men may bring to you the wealth of the nations, and their kings led captive. The book of Revelation was written at a time of persecution and these words would have given the people then reassurance. The idea in these verses is, the, is that the new Jerusalem will include Gentiles, those who had largely been excluded from the Israelites. They will be excluded no more, but will walk by the light of the glory of God. Many historic cities had walls and gates which were intended to provide security against enemy forces. But in the New Jerusalem, none of that will be needed. Gates will stand open all the time. There will be no need for security systems, or prisons, or locks on our doors, or police or military forces. Just imagine. In a place where everyone is honest, we won't need to worry about the security of our money or credit cards or bank accounts. The new Jerusalem will be absolutely safe and secure. There will also be no night. In both Old and New Testaments, night and darkness are used metaphorically to symbolise evil or danger or judgement. But there will be no night in the New Jerusalem, because the very glory of God will illuminate it, and its lamp is the Lamb. And they shall bring the glory and honour of the nations into it. It's a place where people from all nations can come 
to glorify and honour God, no one is exempt. In verse 27 we see that they will in no way enter into it anything profane. These verses serve as a warning. While we are saved by grace, we are also called to be a holy people. Then we will be those who are written in the Lamb's book of life and will enjoy life in the new Jerusalem. In the new Jerusalem, we're told there will be a river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb in the middle of its street. Other scriptures tell us that Jesus is living water. Here, like an artisan well that flows faithfully through summer and winter, through good times and bad, which will slake our spiritual thirst, a thirst that goes to the core of our being. I've recently been catching up on old episodes of Doctor Who on Netflix, and in one of them trees protect and save the earth from disaster. Here in this part of Revelation, we see trees that are helpful and good, and echo passages from the book of Ezekiel and the book of Genesis. Here in Revelation, the tree of life once again produces fruit for the people of the holy city. The idea of the twelve kinds of fruit is that there is a different crop of fruit for each month of the year, a promise of abundant food, a symbol of God's providence. When Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, God cursed the serpent who had tempted them, and the ground that the man would till to eat its produce. Sin also produced the curse of death, but in the June New Jerusalem there will be nothing accursed, and none of the pain of living under a curse. There will be no death there. The new Jerusalem will be paradise restored. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in it. The prophet Ezekiel closed his prophecy by saying, And the name of the city from that day shall be Yahweh is there. The new Jerusalem is that prophecy fully realised. God will be there with Jesus the Lamb. In the New Jerusalem, as well as serving God, we will see his face. To see a person's face, to look into his or her eyes, is very personal. Our faces express our feelings. They provide a clue to the nature of our character. When Moses asked to see Yahweh's glory, Yahweh replied, I will make all my goodness pass before you. But you cannot see my face, for man may not see me and live. The idea is that humans are not equipped to see God's face, any more than we are equipped to touch a high voltage electric line. There is more power there than our mortal bodies can handle. However, Yahweh continued, Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. It will happen while my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you will see my back, but my face shall not be seen. But in the new Jerusalem, all strictures will be lifted. We will be able to look on God's face without penalty. And then we're told his name will be on their foreheads. In Jesus' day, the high priest was required to wear on his forehead a gold rosette engraved with the words, Holy to Yahweh. The mark on one's forehead identifies one's allegiance, whether to God or to the beast. The faithful will be seen clearly by God and they will reign for ever and ever. Jesus promised, if we read a little earlier in the book of Revelation, 
He who overcomes, I will give to him to sit down with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. The Apostle Paul also said, If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. The idea is not that we will reign over other people, but that we will share the blessedness associated with the reign of God and the Lamb in the New Jerusalem. In these uncertain times, although not times of persecution, as they were for the disciples for whom Revelation was written, these are words of hope. Words to encourage us not to let anything cause us to waver away from our faith. For when the trials of life on earth are over, the blessings of heaven will be immense. Amen. Let us say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the security of our homes, in the quietness of this night, and in his presence, let us pray to the Father for the Church, the world, and our own community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we pray for the Church, that it may still share your truths and love showing compassion in these times of uncertainty and strife, and praying that the world governments and authorities are united in the desire to see justice and healing for their nations and ours. Lord, we pray at this time for Christian aid, for the organisers and those who give, that they understand the needs of those they are helping. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Father of grace and mercies, we pray for our own parish communities of Barwell, Stapleton, Potter's Marston, especially those living in Regent Street and Brocky Close for our families and friends who may hear these prayers tonight. Bless them in their concerns for their health and well-being. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, support the bereaved and give them the peace and joy of the hope in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, 
for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we draw all our prayers together, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we begin this Holy Week, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.